G'day team, how are you doing? We're gonna look at censoring and truncation in this video. And these are concepts that I find to be delivered in very complicated fashion in textbooks and sometimes even in lectures as well. So I'm hoping to deliver it to you in a very intuitive fashion. And as you can see, it forms part of a series on survival analysis. You can check out the others up on zstatistics.com or alternatively, I'll put a link in the description below to the playlist. But shall we jump straight into censoring and truncation? Let's do it. So here we go. Now, if you recall from the first video in this series, we know that in survival analysis, we're interested in measuring the time to event from a relevant exposure. So we need some kind of exposure, which is often say the diagnosis of a disease, so say cancer. And survival analysis is all about analyzing the time it takes from that exposure to the event, which is often death, but it can be a number of other things as well, as we found out in that first video. Now, censoring occurs when we don't know the exact time to event for an included observation. So going back to our cancer example, it might be that someone in the sample of people that developed the cancer then died some time later, but we're not exactly sure how long it took them to die. So there's actually three different types of censoring, depending on what piece of information we do have about the time to event. Left censoring is when we know that the time to event is less than some particular value. So say we know that someone died within two years of getting cancer, but we don't know the exact time it took them. So in that case, we know that it's less than two years, but unsure of the exact value. So it's called left censoring. Interval censoring is when we know that the time to event is between two values, but again, are not sure of the exact time to event. So it could be that we know this person died between two and three years from the cancer diagnosis. And if that's the case, we would have interval censoring. Or the most common form of censoring is right censoring, where we know that the time to event is greater than some value. So again, we know that this person survived at least five years, for example, after their cancer diagnosis, but we're unsure of when they died after that. So we know it has to be greater than, say, five years in that case. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shift this all up a little bit. And we're going to look at examples of each of these three types of censoring in turn. And I'm going to start with the right censoring because that, as I said, is the most common form. Now, there's a study from 2016 by Wahutu. And in this study, they're trying to estimate survival time after the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. So this is quite like the example I've been giving so far. Now, the study period started in 1997 and went all the way to 2012. So what that means is that people were enrolled in this study if they were diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at any point throughout 1997 to 2012. Now think about what happens to those people that were enrolled in the study towards the end of that period and still had not died by 2012. Well, the study has to finish up at some point. So we actually don't know when, say, this person died. However, we do still have some information about that person. We know that they survived for at least, it looks like, five years or so. So we can't just throw this data point out. We will still include it as a piece of data, but we will record the fact that, it, that this person actually got censored after five years, but did not die after five years. So if we were to convert this from calendar time to analysis time, where they all start at zero, you can see that the final observation actually finishes with an open circle as opposed to a cross, which indicates censoring as opposed to the event occurring, which in this case is death. So I hope you can see that we know in this case that the time to event is greater than five years, but we just don't know exactly what it is. So that's why it's called right censoring. So in, in this particular study, there were two different sources potentially of right censoring. The first was patients still alive at the end of the study, as we just saw then, but also patients that were lost to follow up. So for example, if someone is identified as having cancer and then goes interstate or they go 
and move countries and we actually don't have any death information after that point, well, again, they will have some kind of minimum value for their time to event because if we followed them up for a little bit, we'd have some information, but we won't know their exact time of death. So again, right censoring would occur there. Let's go back and have a look at left censoring now, which is much less common, but it can indeed occur. This study is from, again, 2016, from Wolfhart Vecce. And this is looking at trying to estimate the age at menage, which if you're like me, you won't have heard that word before, but it is the onset of menstruation for women. So the age at first menstruation, essentially. Now, what happened in this study was that they enrolled a cohort of women from, the, from certain ages. I think it was from 12 or something like that. Some women were entered a bit later on as well. But think about what happens if there are women that were enrolled who have already menstruated. So if they entered the study at, say, 14 years old and have already menstruated, you know that the time it took them to menstruate was less than 14 years, but you don't know the exact value. So in that case, we have left censoring. We know that the time to event is less than some value. And for my example, it was 14 years. So this can happen when you have people that have experienced the event upon entering the study. You will never get this, however, when we're looking at mortality or where the event is death, because you can't enroll someone into a study who's already dead. So here the event was something that was, well, less than death. It was in fact just the onset of menstruation. So you can get left censoring in this case. And if you read up on that case, I'll put the link in the description below, you'll see how they managed to deal with their left censoring in the study. Interval censoring. Okay, what is that? The example we're looking at here is from Rodriguez in 2018, where they were looking at the oral lesion occurrence in immunosuppressed children. So what was happening was that they were looking at a cohort of children that were given liver transplants and obviously a whole lot of immunosuppression drugs to deal with the, um, the liver transplant. But this particular study was trying to figure out how long it took them to develop oral lesions because when you're immunosuppressed, you're more likely to develop oral lesions. And what was happening was that they would go regularly to a dentist or an oral health specialist and they would go at regular intervals. So they would go just say after one year, two years, three years after getting the liver transplant. And that person could identify that an oral lesion event had occurred since their last checkup. So for example, if they found in the second checkup that an oral lesion had occurred, they knew that oral lesions had formed between that first and second checkup without knowing the exact time when the oral lesions had occurred. So again, that's when we know that the time to event is between two values and it would just be between those two checkups, the first of which they had no oral lesions and the second of which they had evidence of oral lesions. All right, so that is censoring. Let's have a look now at what truncation is all about. And while they're often given side by side as related concerns, they're actually very different. So truncation occurs when observations are excluded by virtue of their time to event. Remember that censored observations were still included in our data set, whereas in this case, truncation implies that observations are actually excluded from our data set. So again, we've got two different types of truncation here, left and right truncation. Left truncation occurs when observations with short time to event are excluded. And right truncation is where observations with long times to event are excluded. Now these can be excluded by design or alternatively and more likely they'd just be excluded by virtue of the way that the data is collected. And I might actually pause here to give you a um, just a note on the usage of the word truncation. We often say that the data set is truncated, whereas with censoring, we were referring to individual observations. So an individual observation can be censored, but the whole data set experiences truncation. I have seen it written where they say that an individual observation is truncated, but don't forget, these are hypothetical observations because you don't actually see them anyway. So I'm not quite sure about that usage of the word truncation, even though I've seen it. So I like to just say that the data set 
is truncated rather than the individual observations. So again, let's look at examples to sort of solidify these concepts. Left truncation first. So here's a study from 2014 by Gilbert where they're trying to estimate the survival time of animal neonates. So a neonate is just an animal that is very, very young, so straight after birth. But in humans, we generally say that you're a neonate within the first 28 days after your birth. Now, this study came about because it's well understood that the neonate period is the most dangerous for most animals. You're the most vulnerable to predators and just generally not being self-sufficient. So how they tried to estimate the survival time was by finding neonates, essentially tagging them, and then following them up to see if they died and then measuring how long that took. But here's the problem. Neonates with very short survival times would probably evade sampling. So if immediately after birth, say within a few hours or days, the animal died, they might not even have been available to sample. So there's going to be a bias then introduced into our analysis if we don't adjust for this. The bias being the shortest survival times are actually missing from our data set. And that's where left truncation is said to occur. So as you can see, this is why I tend to use truncation to relate to the data set, because it really is a problem with the data set when there's truncation occurring. All right, now let's have a look at right truncation. This is a, a bit of an involved study, but we're estimating the time to development of AIDS. This is a, a study from 1989 during the AIDS epidemic uh, from HIV contaminated blood transfusion. So we know that one can contract HIV from a blood transfusion if it's contaminated. So what they did was they tried to figure out how long it took from the blood transfusion to the development of AIDS. And if you know anything about this virus, you know that you can be HIV positive for a long while before you develop AIDS. So AIDS is the disease that follows an HIV infection. But the problem here was that people were entered into the study once they developed AIDS. And then they would look retrospectively to say, well, when did you get the blood transfusion? And then there they would figure out how long the time interval was between those two points. So those people that had really long times to event, as in the time from contaminated blood transfusion to the development of AIDS was very long, they won't actually get into the study because they won't have developed AIDS by the time the study finished. So realistically, the study is biased towards people that developed AIDS quickly. And again, they had to adjust for that in this study, but it shows that truncation was occurring. And in this case, it would be right truncation. So that's it, censoring and truncation done. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, that'll be great. Tell your friends about it, other statistically minded people. That'll help me out a lot. But otherwise, I'll see you at the next video in which we'll look at life tables. See you there.